America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. The entire system has to burn. And I'm not going to even use save this country. This country is not worth saving. This country is a piece of shit. Decolonize yourself. Do your own white supremacy dismantling. So Matt Walsh featured or exposed Syra Rao and Regina Jackson, who are the organizers of a race to dinner gathering, where they invite white women to dinner, where they discuss issues about deconstructing and decolonizing their whiteness, how they can be better anti-racist and how they can use their white privileges to better black lives. The movie has received a lot of interest and of course, a lot of criticisms. Of the criticisms the movie has received, the worst, in my opinion, of them all is from the portion of the movie featuring Robin D'Angelo. Hi, Robin. Hi. And what's your name? I'm Matt. Matt. Hi, yeah. Matt. <laughs> nice to meet you. I just had to ask who you are because you have to be careful. <laughs> Never be too careful. Also, Robin D'Angelo fell for the weakness in her own arguments for DEI in that scene in the movie. Robin D'Angelo is the best seller author for the book White Fragility. And since the release of the documentary, Robin D'Angelo released a statement stating that when I write for the interview, a few things felt off. The grips would not even make eye contact with me and the interviewer, who was introduced as Matt, appearing to be wearing an ill-fitted wig. Matt presented himself as someone new to anti-racist work and seemed earnest, and his questions did not come off as adversarial. By the end, however, things got weird, she wrote in a statement on her website. Let's go to the statement here. Page not found. And since then, Robin D'Angelo has also taken down her social media accounts. Looks like these all went from zero to a hundred within a moment. Well, that's what I want to talk about this time around. If you're new to the channel and you're getting any value, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. So let's get into it. Decolonize yourself. Do your own white supremacy dismantling and then you can start to be to bring in other people can i just can i just say one last thing can i just propose a toast uh i mean just raise a glass if you're racist and that's the thing cheers uh, oh i'm not racist let me so raise, well all the rest of it. in the first part this is probably the best documentary showing the trajectory of modern society in my opinion and i'm not surprised actually that the documentary grossed over four million dollars in the opening weekend and since then it's been in over 1500 theaters uh, i watched from canada actually and it's grossed over 12 million dollars since its release it's also rated the number one documentary of the decade according to matt walsh i don't know if that's true it achieved a 99% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that's impressive, especially on Rotten Tomatoes. It is by Matt Walsh and it's garnered a significant attention, particularly for its satirical approach to the topic of diversity, equity and inclusion. Let me know if you've seen the movie and from which country you watched the movie. And after seeing it, what were your thoughts? Please let me know in the comment section. So in my opinion, at first, I thought this was just acting. You know, I had to catch myself and remind myself that it is indeed a documentary. And it reveals to me the next level of problems we've created for ourselves and trying really hard to convince ourselves about the solutions. Now, here are some of the key moments from that documentary without giving it away too much. Talk about it earlier, Syra Rao and Regina Jackson organizing a race to dinner event where they invite a bunch of white women to dinner and they discuss issues about deconstructing and decolonizing their whiteness and how they can be better anti-racist people and how they can use their white privilege to better black lives. The only problem 
is that these deconstruction dinners cost 5,000 USD a pop. And I thought to myself, that's 7,000 Canadian dollars. Goodness. The most worrisome moments from that scene is this. I can't even believe when Saira Rao said that America as a country is a piece of shit and that it needed to be burned down. America is racist to its bones. All of the- So inherently. Yeah. The entire system has to burn. And I'm not gonna even use save this country. This country is not worth saving. This country is a piece of shit. And I think she said that before in a previous comment on Twitter. I looked that up. She said before that the American flag makes me sick. That's in a recent Twitter post by her. In another one, she said, white folks before telling me that your Indian husband or your wife or friend or colleague doesn't agree with anything I say about racism or think I'm crazy, please Google the word token internalized oppression and gaslighting. These are supposedly some elite women meeting, but I couldn't believe the level of craziness in the conversations that happened in that scene. I also couldn't believe that Matt Walsh made those women toast to being racist. And it's that moment when Regina Jackson retorted to herself that she couldn't be racist because she's black. That's what we're dealing with where being black bestows the privilege for you that you could not be racist. And being white makes you inherently racist in the new definition for DEI in our society today. And to start with, you know, in my opinion, this is 2024. It's not 1824. For goodness sakes, I use the same bathroom as anyone now. I don't sit in the back of a bus or a train for being black. Now I can vote while black. You know, society has made a huge progress. Significant strides has been made in human rights, in economic development, in education, in governance. I think the US abolished slavery in the 1800s. Britain abolished the slave trade in 1807, for instance, and slavery itself in all of its colonies in the 1800s. Canada also abolished slavery in the 1800s. It's a long, long time ago now. And this is 2024. Now, the second part I will talk about from the scenes in the documentary is a bookstore assistant who couldn't say the forbidden word nigger, which is the title of a book that uh, Matt Walsh was inquiring about in that scene. And Matt Walsh later called the lady and asked her if that book was available for him to pick up because the lady had scolded him on why he couldn't say that word nigger in the first place. And, you know, it took this long winded effort from Matt to even describe that forbidden word as the title of a book over that phone call. Let me talk about another scene here. The worst of the issues from that movie, in my opinion, was with Robin D'Angelo. Robin D'Angelo is well known for her work, right, on anti-racism in the book White Fragility, which has you know, it's been a bestseller author. She has faced significant criticism since the movie was released. D'Angelo actually claimed that she was misled by the filmmakers who initially described the project as supporting anti-racist cause or causes under the working title, uh, I think, Shades of Justice, she said. We, sh we shouldn't forget that D'Angelo, Robin D'Angelo, was paid $15,000 for her appearance in that scene. She later on said she donated it after the backlash. And the other weird part with D'Angelo in that scene is actually talking about reparations, where Matt Walsh was actually painting the scenario to Robin D'Angelo. And it showed the light-weighted mental argument that she has about DEI, the incoherence, the inconsistency about DEI, even in quote to a DEI guru that she, that she claims to be. You now asking also Robin D'Angelo about uh, a black co-worker who feels uncomfortable when you smile at him one time and another time prefers that you don't smile at all. But the solution that she suggested to Matt is to actually stop talking or stop taking that hallway together with this black uncomfortable person. I think this is just crazy. 
you know, it produces, in my opinion, an awkwardness of interactions between people. It's, it's almost, you know, this dystopian argument about society coming from a neurotic mind, in my opinion. Ultimately, it's going to produce social isolations and social bankruptcy in many people. You will end up with a therapist after, you know, being socially bankrupt and therapists who are also equally evil in their ways to some extent they're great therapists out there also you'd end up as a routine client of therapy becoming incapable to make any decisions by yourself until a therapist helps you because you started off with the craziness of dei and might end up not keeping your job after internalizing subjecting everyone to your racial prejudice which has no remedy and the worst part was also when she goes to get some cash to pay the black guy who was matt walsh's producer in that scene she knew it was awkward but the whims the manipulation that has been produced by dei in this case tells her that she should not scrutinize the idea and it makes the scene entirely dumb, and I think she felt dumb about the whole thing afterward. Now, there are several other things I could talk about with respect to this movie. I couldn't believe that Matt actually organized a DEI seminars. He got certified to organize it. And you know, the crazy moment also where he confronted his racist uncle. I couldn't believe that part. You know, he was yelling at his uncle, you know, concerning the racist coming that he had passed in for years back. And my greatest surprise was that everyone in the room found it so easy to rebuke this uncle, to humiliate him, to destroy him, even people yelling the F word at this uncle. And a lady in the room also saying that she can't interact anymore with families. And I think here's what it does. Here's what it does in society you will awkwardly quit your job because you couldn't keep yourself you couldn't keep that job because of your perception about racial discrimination since everyone can use the hallway and the lack of ability for you to for people to also predict your emotions or the desired smiley face level that you have you know considering the scene from that movie you quit your job your finances are going to get ruined you will become depressed, most likely, and end up in therapy funded by tax dollars. You will become socially bankrupt, economically ruined, mentally unstable. You will have no family to interact with and slowly dying a social recluse. But DEI also offers a lot of phony programs to help people who have fallen prey to such to feel safer in their skin color. But I sincerely hope that you know, for anyone watching this out there right now, you know, beyond just talking about reviewing a movie, as it were, I hope you will be able to retrace your steps to the beginning and get your life together if you've fallen prey to such ideologies in the past. You know, the way Matt also ended that session where he brought out whips and he couldn't believe that people would actually take whips from him in their attempt to decentralize their whiteness and cure their racist tendencies. I think that portion in that movie actually cut through Matt's soul. And it would cut through the soul of anyone watching it, really. I believe it genuinely felt the pain, you know, in his soul at that point that people would take the whip from him. And of course, there are many other things I could mention from the movie, but, you know, there are moments like... Uh, Brisha Wade, who organizes these events and to, to also help people decolonize their whiteness. And she was the organizer. She was the one in charge in the room, but she claimed to feel unsafe because there were white people in the room. Isn't that racism against the white people in the room? You need to speak up about this issue. That's what I think, guys. You know, Matt did a great job. People have criticized him, but I think at our own levels, we need to speak up against these issues, against these ideologies, confront it. You know, the circle around all of us is slowly shrinking where we can't really talk about this issue easily anymore, especially in a country like this. And if the circle around you, you know, the circle where you can talk about it, say in your safe space at home, maybe that's the only place left you can talk about it. Not, maybe not even among friends anymore, or even among family anymore. 
And if that's the case, I feel you might as well, you know, come out, fight against these thought processes out there. But here is my world view about DEI. I talked about it in the previous monologue. I encourage you to check it out. Here's my world view. I believe in the sacredness of life for each individual. I, I condemn any racial injustice, including slavery. I condemn that act by the perpetrators altogether. And I believe, you know, life is sacred for each one of us. And we shouldn't punish anyone for what was done five, ten generations ago. And the sooner we move on from the past, the better for all of us. The sooner we recognize that the issues relating to character building, issues relating to faith, and, you know, the power of education that can take the a child from a dirt poor background, at least into middle class or even with the princes of life, those we should not overlook. Those are things we should emphasize in the society way more than issues relating to decolonizing and decentralizing whiteness and, you know, feeling oppressed or not oppressed. And we all can contribute positively to building an orderly society that's better for all of us all. I also believe that, you know, I believe in that Psalm of David, that you formed me in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb, so that I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Well, those are my opinion about the movie, Am I Racist? I encourage you to go check it out, right in the comment section if you've watched it as well. Let me know what you think about the movie. Well, if you made it this far, there are chances you and I share something in our thought process together. So please subscribe, help support the work on the channel, and like the video so that others get to see it. I'll see you very soon. Take care.